Today we're going to be talking about Jerome Brunner, who is one of the most influential educational thinkers of his time. Over his 100 years of life, he's made huge contributions to both psychology and education in regards to the learner and the learning process. In fact, many of his ideas and um, theories are still being implemented today in the classroom. Jerome was born on October 1st, 1915 in New York, New York, and died on June 5th, 2016. He was blind until the age of two, which many say influenced his passions towards perception, learning, memory, and other aspects of cognition. Three of his major educational ideas are the three modes of representation, the act of learning, and spiral curriculum. The three modes of representation can best be described in three stages. The first is inactive, which is from birth to one years old. This is an action-based stage where learning is through hands-on actions such as touching and feeling. Um, this can best be described as a baby turning the pages of a book and then picking up another book and turning the pages again. The next is the iconic stage, which is from one to six years old. This is a visually based stage where learning is through pictures and videos. Um, this can be seen as a toddler picking up a book of the alphabet and seeing a picture of a cat and then learning the letter C. And the next is the symbolic stage, which is seven years and older. And this is a language and auditory based stage. Um, this is where learners can develop the capacity to think abstractly and interpret words and symbols. So this is um, where a child can read for research um, with more complex language, and they can now group um, that cats and dogs are both animals. So next, we have the act of learning. And this involves three stages as well. The first is acquisition, which is gaining new information. This is where a learner sees a picture of a cat and dog and sees them as separate um, concepts. The next is transformation, which is changing old information into new information. So now the learner sees the pictures of the cats and dogs and groups them together as animals. The next is evaluation, which is judging whether the uh, change of information makes sense. So does it make sense that a cat and dog are both in the animal category? Yes. If not, we reevaluate our understanding. So next is his three major impacts on education, which are the learning process, discovery learning, and scaffolding. The learning process is actually a direct result of the three modes of representation. Um, now teachers are able to use the inactive stage to um, teach new concepts through objects and manipulatives. Um, they are able to read introduce concepts in the iconic stage using visuals. This is where they use diagrams and charts um, and graphic organizers to display concepts to students. And then lastly, they can use the symbolic stage to discuss concepts using symbols, words, and formulas. This is especially important in math classes where uh, most concepts are conceptual and um, students really need to go through each process to get a better understanding of complex ideas. Um, the next is discovery learning, and this is where students are able to construct their own um, knowledge for themselves. So th this is very hands-on. This is um, where they get to explore uh, new concepts on their own. And then lastly is scaffolding, and this usually involves um, structured interaction between an adult and a child where um, the adult is helping the child be able to um, achieve a specific goal until the child can achieve the goal on their own. So Brunner had many um, ideas and theories regarding psychology and education. Um, he published many books, but not everyone agreed with his ideas. Um, one critic actually really disliked Discovery Learning and um, said that it creates cognitive overload it may result in potential misconceptions and it makes it difficult for teachers to detect problems and misconceptions. Personally, um, as a teacher, I think that there are significant skills and knowledge that students are required to know, hence why we have um, curriculum and standards and we're forced to create learning objectives for students. Um, if discovery learning is the only um, resource for instruction and the only uh, strategy we're using as teachers, then uh, students are often going to be left with an inadequate education and they're going to, um, to get frustrated when they don't understand um, 
new learning or they can't find the answers. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thanks.